Samantha Starr studied creative arts and interior design before setting her sights on scrapbooking. Samantha is a regular featured guest here on Cool to Craft, and she is also a featured teacher at Craft Tech University, which you must check out. Today, Samantha is here to share a really cool airbrush technique. I'm delighted to welcome Samantha Starr. Hi, Samantha. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope it's nice and sunny where you are. It's gorgeous here in Montreal today. Um, we're going to get right to work because we have some really fun things to do today. I'm going to be working with my airbrush. So I'm going to ask Tiffany to put up a slide of the finished project so I can get into craft cam mode. And I will move my camera down. All righty, so I'll ask Tiffany to remove that slide. And you can see my desktop here. So I'm going to be working on a teeny tiny canvas today. And you can see how small this little canvas is. Isn't it, isn't it cute? All small things are cute. And what I'm going to be working with is my Copic airbrush. And I'm going to ask Tiffany to put up a slide of what the airbrush um, compressor looks like. Now, when I first worked with the Copic airbrush, I got super excited and I had to run out and get one of these. And um, they do have other systems as well that don't work with the compressor. But for someone like me who's going to go through lots and lots and lots and lots of usages out of this, the compressor is really sort of long term the most economic way to go. So that's what I'm working with. It's currently down on my floor, so I cannot show you a good picture of it. But just so you can see what's going on sort of behind scenes here. So I'll ask Tiffany to pull that down. So what I'm going to be working with today is um, a masking technique. Now, this is obviously a mask that I've gotten a lot of use out of because you can see that it's like, it started off clear. So right now it's brown and it's sparkly. And, and um, the thing with the masks is that they're sticky on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down onto my canvas. And here is my airbrush. So what we do with our markers is that we stick them in the airbrush like so. And what happens is that air comes out of this um, metal pinpoint here. And it sprays ink from our markers onto the surface that we are working on. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and spritz it here. And you can probably hear my compressor in the background. And what it's doing is that it's refilling itself up with air. Because obviously, as I spray air out, um, it needs to refill itself back up. Now, you can, you can use this with both the Copic original markers and the sketch markers. It does not work with the chows. like that. Now I'm going to put on a second color here. And I'm going to be using, um, I'm using today RV19 and E37. And I'm just going to be adding some more of this color here just sort of to add it up. Now, Copic markers are alcohol ink, so they will work on non-porous surfaces such as metal and plastic. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do around my edges. Just like that. There we go. So that's sort of a quick demo on how the airbrush works. 
I love doing the masking technique because ta -da, it's um it's just one of my favorite techniques. I love working with masks with any kind of um with any kind of paint or anything like that. But the airbrush definitely gives it sort of that grungy vintage look, which is one of my favorite things to do. Now, one of my other favorite things to do with these markers is to color things in. So on my original sample here, you can see that I've got some rhinestones in the corner. And the thing with the rhinestones is that all of my rhinestones are clear. And then I take... I'm taking my, my RV-19, as I did in my airbrush, and I am coloring my rhinestones. So I know that they are going to perfectly coordinate with my project. So then I'm just going to lift these up. I'm just going to apply them in the corner. And I know that um, they're going to match because it's the exact same marker that I used. One of my other favorite uses is with clear buttons, doing the exact same thing. And it appears that I am not focusing. And I'm wondering if there's something on my on my camera here. So what we're going to do next, even though I'm slightly out of focus here, is that I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the flower that I did in the center of, there we go. See, it just didn't want to focus on my canvas. So there is a flower in the center of the canvas. And this is a technique that I love doing, and it doesn't take much effort. And basically, you need three flowers that have six petals each. So you want them to be nice and symmetrical. And then what you do is you keep one of your flowers whole. On one flower, you're going to cut off one petal like that. So you see I've removed one petal. And on the other flower, you're going to remove two petals like that. Okay, so I have a few different... So on our flower that is just regular like this, we're going to fold it in sort of every direction possible. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to curl down your petals. Now you can use either... Um, a toothpick. I'm using the back of a paintbrush here. And for those of you who are wondering, I actually got this flower off of the wild card cartridge um, in Cricut because you want a six petaled flower. So you can see I've sort of curled up all my flowers. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, with a little bit of glue, Put some glue on your petal, and you're going to close it so that you end up with one like this. And then we have this four-petaled one here, and you're going to do the same. And then the trick to all of this, so here I have my three-petaled flower. The trick to all of this is you're going to continue rolling back your petals, and you're just going to layer everything one inside the other, as you can see here. And you're going to just glue that directly onto your canvas. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. I'm going to keep sort of rolling here. Are there any questions? Um, about the airbrush system. I saw someone ask if it'll work on t-shirts. It is an alcohol ink, and um, I haven't purposely put it on my clothes, but I know of some 
one who did get it on their clothes. Um, there are over 200 colors of the pen, okay? Because it is an alcohol ink, it is a semi-transparent ink. So I find that the lighter colors aren't always best to airbrush with because because the fact that they're, um, there we go, 344 sketch colors. It's, it, I did my certification over a year and a half ago, so there have been colors added, obviously. So like I'm saying, the colors are semi-transparent, so if you're airbrushing with a lighter color, you might not necessarily see it um, as you're airbrushing. What am I using to curl my flowers? I'm just using the back of a paintbrush, but you can use uh, a skewer stick, a toothpick, a chopstick, anything thin. And as you can see, I'm just curling my petals here, and I'm just piling everything one into each other.